playing for one of the 8-0 slots. There could be either two or three undefeated players at the end of the day. We'll see what one of them will be one of these two men. So we are underway with the match. Family on left, Witten on the right. Witten with the die roll. He's going to start with Zergo Bell Striker. Great one drop for the deck. And you can see how different is this with Chris on the play. Then Zach has to decide, even if he has Wild Slash, between killing the Elvish Mystic or playing a one drop. Yeah. CVM with a turn one Mystic. It looks like, looks like he will have a turn two Courser or Death Mist if he wants it. It's a very, very strong opening. Maybe only two lands, so there are chances for hiccups. Probably seem to go with something like Courser. For Zach, he swings in for two. Chris goes down to 18. Second land. We'll try to keep the pressure up as much damage as he want, can get in. Chris's hand is two Elvish, so another Elvish Mystic, a second land, a Courser, a Death Mist Rafter, and a Whisperwood. Very strong hand, but one that's very much leaning on his, his Elvish Mystic staying in play for a little while here. Yeah, Zach's turn two play, no kill spell on the Mystic. It's a Dragon Fodder. That's a win for Chris, I assume? Oh, for sure. I mean, Chris, getting to, Chris can't untap fast enough. He is so excited about getting his mana creature coming into the second turn. Draws another Death Mist Raptor. He'll play another Elvish Mystic. Now, he may actually not have... No, he only had one land. That's huge. Yeah, very risky keep here. Yeah. We'll see if Zach's able to punish him with any sort of removal spell. I mean, if he has any burn spell, they're, they're getting fired at the Mystics, right? They're... So here we see a swing for four. Chris will take it all. Cannot afford to lose those elves. Yeah, I mean, he certainly can't block. He's, he's yeah. missed his so second land drop. He'll be at 14. Now, does Zach take care of the elves? Yeah, lightning strike. You see he has things like Founder Street Denizen in hand. Not going to play any of them. Yeah, the upside's too high here. If Chris misses again, it's it's almost certainly lights out. And Chris doesn't miss. He hits here. It's a fetch land. It's going to take, take a lot of heat for it. Now, to be fair, Zach also missed lands. That's not nearly as bad for a target red, though. And Zach's already got a board, and I believe he has Stoke the Flames in hand, which is a really potent turn potentially coming up for Zach, where he can play some stuff and stoke away the Corsair Crucifix should Chris decide to go down that road. What will be the three drop? We see two Death Mists and a Corsair for Chris. Now, there's some advantage. He, he almost wants to go for the, a Death Mist. I wouldn't be surprised to see him do that this turn, because next turn, he'd like to play Corsair and get a shot at that free land. For sure. And, and, and Death Mist blocks just as well this turn as Corsair Crucifix, and that's the play that Chris is going to make. Have Death Mist Raptor. Draw is another Foundry Street Denizen from Zach Witten. So see if he has a kill spell, wants to go for it. It'll take a lot of his resources, or he just wants to flood the board with creatures. Well, with Stoke the Flames, he can, can do, do both. both. Yeah. yeah. So here's the Foundry Street. Here's the Foundry Street. Here's a Stoke the Flames, takes care of Death Mist. Zergo swings for two. Chris down to 11. Two cards remain in Zach's hand, but he is going to have a big next turn. Especially now with two Foundry Street Denizens. Uh, a spell is very good, as that's probably kill something. And, uh, you know, uh, creatures are also very potent alongside the Foundry Street Denizens. Elvish Mystic was the draw for Chris. No land. He will play Corsair. Does he find land? Yes, he does. It's a temple. He'll gain one, go up to 12. Top card is a fetch land. Let's see if he wants to keep that. I. I bet he does. He just needs to hit Whisperwood. It's awfully greedy to ship lands to the bottom <laughs> at this stage, so. All right, untap for Zach, and this this could be the big turn. A lot of damage, and that's uh -oh. that's not a good sign. He's counting. Even just a, a Dragon Fodder is very good here. What, a Dragon Fodder pushes through seven. And how about Ooh. a Heel Cutter? Oh, my, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is 11 points of damage. Yeah, that is... Uh... One copy in the main deck, <laughs> showing up at a pretty good time. Well, here's 11 points. Corsair can't block. Chris will go to one, and maybe he gets that heal, that Whisper next turn, but that's not going to be enough to deal with Heal Cutter at all. He passes back. That was the last card <laughs> that, that Chris wanted to see. Draws the land, sees the Xenagos, and there's, there's no coming back from this yeah, one. Even Rabble Master that turn, I mean, it's bad news. But you, but you have a chance. You have a chance. I, I think Heal Cutter's too much to overcome. And yeah, well, <laughs> Chris, I, I mean, if Zach repeats last turn, that's, that'll be the end. Yeah, I mean, Whisperwood is a dead end. That's not saving Chris. And I don't think he has anything in his hand better than Whisperwood Elemental. And we're on to game two. Game one for Zach Witten. One game away from that 8-0 start to our season two invitational. And really important for Zach to get that game, to win the die roll in the first place. Yep. And then to, to pick up that game because 
post board's going to get a lot more challenging. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Now, one thing, we will have our Season 2 Invitational. Remember, we will get our third and fourth slots punched to the Slayers Championship this weekend. But if you want to get into one of the Invitationals and you want to get to the Players Championship, you're going to have to come to one of our... In you're going to have to start coming to our events. We have our Season 3 schedule up, so that starts just after this event. And it's going to start with our Modern Grand Prix in Charlotte. That's next week. You and Cedric will be covering it. And then we go back to the Open Series. Yeah, exactly. And, and technically, Season 3 starts tomorrow with the two-day $20,000 Modern Open Series event. After that, we're going to go to standard events in Indianapolis, Baltimore, and then Chicago for the first time in standard Open Series history in the middle of July. We go to Richmond for standard, then Legacy in Washington, D.C., a standard Grand Prix in London, England, a modern Open Series event in Charlotte, and then the Season 3 Invitational in New Jersey, standard and Legacy as the Invitational formats with a two-day $20,000 standard Open Series event August 28th through the 30th. Yeah, so a lot of magic to be played as we build toward our Season 3 Invitational. Remember, that one will be standard and Legacy. This is our first Modern Invitational. We have two Modern Invitationals and two Legacy ones this year, and standard at all of them. Yeah, and uh, season, so season 2 right here in Columbus, and then Season 4 at the end of the year, those will feature Modern. And the Players' Championship, which format was just announced over at starcygames.com, will feature all three constructed formats through the tournament. Now, remember, there is also, speaking of Modern, there's a playmat you get for showing up to any of the events in Season 3. That is this this lovely feline. This is Tassiper the Golden Fang. You may you may have seen her show up a couple times in Legacy, especially in Grix's Delver. Yeah, I mean, this is... Uh, <laughs> A very popular uh, play mat <laughs> from what I can gather on social media. Uh, there's a dog that's either a slave or just a happy dog because dogs are just generally happy. Hang out with a mischievous cat. And this is free for everyone who signs up for one of the two-day $20,000 open series. All throughout season three, the dog's name is apparently Bananas. That makes Life, sense. That makes sense. Life for Bananas seems pretty depressing, well, but Bananas to... seems unaware of that, blissfully unaware, either through mind control or just because Bananas is a dog. Well, what in the storyline? It's, it's a zombie, right? Ta Tassiger has mind control some zombies. You're the one. You're always. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. So what I'm saying that's a rhetorical question. I'm actually telling you it, it is a zombie that then they serve food on, you know, their slaves, zombie slaves. That they gotcha. Chain up, they serve food on their head because, you know, they're the Sultai. They kind of were into that sort of. They do that. Gotcha. But so this there time, you go. So the dog is serving the cat here, yes. basically. Sideboard time. All right, Let's so Chris got I said Chris has some real good cards this matchup. All right, how does this sound? We have one Arc Lightning, check. Three Nylea's Disciple, loving that one. Two Hornet Nest. Very solid. Those all seem, so there's some other things you can do. That, I think those are the ones he goes to, but those seem like six cards that are all very high impact in this matchup. Uh, yeah, Arbor Colossus, Arc Lightning, Nelia's Disciple, and Hornet Nest all seem excellent to me. On the other side, there's Scouring Sands, a Searing Blood, four Rose, four Eidolon, the Great Revel, a Destructive Revelry, a Goblin Round Master, two Heal Cutters, and a Hall of Triumph. I really like the additional copies of Goblin Heal Cutter in this matchup. Four copies of Rose seems like a no-brainer. Rose seems great. I mean, Heal Cutter, we saw that was great last game. So in that sense, Zach has his own sideboard that's very good here. Yeah, I think Chris is getting the way better end of it. I mean, he's got some cards that Zach just can't really recover from, except with very specific stuff. How beatable is Anilia's Disciple in this matchup? It's that's I, In a lot of ways, that's the least of Zach's worries, because if Nylea's Disciple is for a lot, it means that Chris already has a board, and Zach has mostly lost the fight. Zach can also fight it with a Tarkus command. He can fight the trigger that way. To me, the bigger problems are cards like Arc Lighting, Hornet Nest, and Arbor Colossus, which are very effective at locking up the ground either early on in the game or later on. Hornet Nest is the big one. Yeah, Hornet... <laughs> Ugh. I mean, that's that's really heel cutter or bust. Or Zach Straw has to be exceptional playthrough. Well, so normally it means he has to stop attacking until he has one lethal alpha strike. Because once you... Can, I, it seems like there's very few lines that you can actually attack into a hornet nest and have anything good happen. Yeah, there's some decks that have the power to punch through it after the hornet nest breaks, or maybe they're armed with flyers. There's workarounds kind of in this weird spot, but for, for Zach's deck, it is just an all-or-nothing proposition. You can't go halfway through a hornet nest and then try to beat the leftovers. Heal Cutter is very helpful to that end. That's yeah. a very nice response to hornet nest. We saw the power point, I suppose, that back at the the last standard pro tour, some teams taking playing red green bees, knowing that they're actually with really out of respect to a Tarka Red for the yeah. event. Yeah, I mean roast plus hornet nest is a nice little combo on your own end of the table. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of bees. Have you played against that deck when you've been playing your mono red? I have not. Red green bees. I'm not, I'm not running into I that. I feel like that's that's hornet nest is good enough. I mean the the roast at that point is just I'm not beating hornet nest plus a removal spell in most games, so sure. it's just kind of rubbins at that point. 
the courting for hornet. What, if, right. what, what about like collected companying for multiple hornets' nests? Dude, that would be sure. sweet. Wouldn't mind losing to that. Would be like, okay, sure. At least it's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Better than just that sea dry no. <laughs> Pelucranos. Yeah, I've, I've lost to those cards, you know, hundreds of times. It's not exciting anymore. But collect a company for two copies of Hornet Nest inside of combat. Yeah, at least at least there's some cool points when yeah. you. Yeah. All right. So, someone's having a good time at least, you know. <laughs> Curious to see if Zach brought in the idol on the Great Rebel. It, it does have spots of being okay in this matchup, especially if Chris's hand is without man acceleration. But it's also something where it can punish Zach later in the game when his hand's cheap. Chris has a board of some expensive stuff and can start pressuring Zach ahead of schedule. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, that seems touchy. I mean, if you want it, it would certainly only be in a, a potential game three. I don't think you'd want it on the draw. Well, it's definitely a swing card. I mean, yeah, you, you may want it anyway, but it's much better on the play than on the draw. Six cards, it looks like, for Zach Witten. It's got lands and spells. So he'll go ahead and keep. So we are underway game two. Van Meter down a game. And it looks like a one-lander for Zach, where his only land is a temple. That temple is painful. I mean, it looks like Zach's hand's just all one drops. Rattleclaw Mystics, the first play of the game from Chris. That's on turn two. We go back over to Zach. Does not hit his, uh, his land, so he's going to be operating one spell a turn, at least until he draws it. And it'll be a turn two Monastery Swift Spear getting in for one. And getting in for zero, Chris is just going to trade it. Yeah, I think I think Chris's hand is a little bit on the cumbersome side. He's not really looking to ramp anything out. He's got Corsair and Nylea's Disciple, so sure, no harm in trading. Let's suit up with green mana symbols. Corsair played off three forests, shows a forest on top. Back over to Zach. Does not draw a land. Here's Foundry Street Denizen going to be the turn for the play. And Nice. Yeah, this may, this may just be, this may be a quick one. Whisperwood waiting on top for Chris. I mean, it may take a while, but. It'll take as long as Zach wants to play it. Exactly. We're, we are going to be playing a third game. High risk, and with five one drops and one temple on the draw, that still seems like something you want to go for, though. Yeah, it's hard to win on five cards with a deck like a Tarka Red. You know, you need a uh, critical mass of stuff to make your deck work. But uh, it, it did not pan out well for him, and now I believe we've reached the point of no return. Well, Elias Disciple is going to get hit by Lightning Strike. Zach does hit the mana for it, but I mean, just. Far behind here. Here's land five. We know what's coming up. Whisperwood. Chris at 24. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's ahead in every facet of the game. Yeah, it's 25. Usually my, my threshold for conceding is, do I win if I stack my deck and stack my opponent's deck? I believe Zach is at the point where that's no longer help. That's no longer help. No, yeah, I don't think you... I don't think he just beats the Whisperwood. Yeah. I mean, if Chris just doesn't attack for a really long time. Sure. Then probably still not. There's the, yeah, there's always the uh, opponent is suddenly brain dead scenario. <laughs> but assuming that Chris, you know, knows to attack yeah, with his 4-4 four, uh, four into your 1-1. One, one. Yeah, land for Zach. And this is the kind of, so this was just, what, a gamble from Zach that didn't pay off. And you, there is some of this, especially on six-card hands with a Tarka Red. Uh, I don't mind the gamble, especially, you know, with, with it, the land being a Scry land, which means you have both colors of mana. Yeah, do you, if you're going to keep a one-lander on the draw, would you rather have a Temple or just have a Mountain? I mean, his, his draw is slower, but it's less likely to whiff. I would probably rather have the Temple. Okay. It's just, uh, you know, uh, the mountain allows you to play your one drops, but your one drops are on their own unlikely to be any functional hand from Chris. Big swing, eight damage. Zach's chump blocking, takes four, goes to 11, has no creatures. Chris, I think, is going to make another Whisperwood Elemental. Could manifest two more. Yeah, there we go, two more things. Here's an Elvish Mystic. He's not going to show that Hornet Nest, though. Yeah, no reason to. Could influence how Zach sideboards. Land. Manifest, manifest. We'll see if Zach gets that information, see if he gets to see a board card here. I guess that's what he's hoping for. Draws a guy, counts the damage. It's six, ten. It's a boatload. 
is 17. There's a draw. Courser is the next card. All right, Zach gets as much information as he can and then concedes. Learned what he could learn, and now we go to game three. Which wasn't much. I don't think he saw any board cards there. He saw, sorry, he saw Nelia's Disciple. Yeah. But there's not much you can... I guess that main, makes you more likely to hold Atarkas Tarka, Tarka commands. Yeah, you might play a little bit more passively with the Tarkas command and try to, to trap the Nihilus Disciple. But at the stage where Chris played the Nihilus Disciple, he just needed to, to cast something. So uh, he wasn't so far ahead at that point that he could worry about concealing information. But once he got to the Whisperwood Elementals, uh, Chris made some effort to conceal information from Zach. No reason to show the Hornet Nest at that stage. All right, so go back to game three. The Zach's going to get to be on the play for this one, though. He said that die roll, important at winning game one. He's going to come back for the third game. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is how the matchup feels a lot from, from my side of it. Game one is close. It's a huge deal on to be on the player on the draw. Game one, uh, game two, rather, or wh whatever the cyborg game is that you're on the draw, you're likely to get mushed. It's just too hard to keep up with man acceleration into quality four and five mana threats. And then if you're on the play for the third game, your hands of removal plus good threats are, are often enough to keep Green Devotion off balance for long enough for to piece together lethal. Yeah, so it looks like Chris doing the tactic of shuffle up a 75, pull out 15 again. Well, he's also got some cards that are potentially play draw biased. Uh, he's pulling out all the Xenagoses, it looks like here. Yeah, Xenagos is a lot better on the play than it is on the draw. Uh, even Dragon Lord Atarka probably left Chris's deck under any circumstances, but. Uh, yeah. There's some other cards here that I feel are much, much more powerful for Chris when he's on the play than on the draw. We seem actually have to keep cards like Genesis Hydra in, which I can't imagine is a great card in this matchup. Well, it's you can pretty expensive. But... You can at least cast it as a 2-2 two -two or a 3-3. Three -three. I mean, sure. you know, obviously you would love to, to go crazy with it, but it's at least something you can cast early on. The same thing is not true of Dragonlord Atarka, for example. Now, Chris may still want Dragonlord Atarka, but it does run the risk of getting clogged. Yeah. So one thing, if you are watching us a lot of it on Twitch.tv, make sure to join the chat. This is our Twitch chat that we have. We'll be running all weekend. Uh, one thing that we're doing, this is the exclusive subscriber-only chat for the weekend. And but it's for 4.99 a month. You can join join the chat with us. We have custom emoticons and badges for each person, um, and real really fun ones too. Uh, commentators, some of our SEG animals. We see our slow paced slow play turtle. Our my favorite is the jet packed steampunk penguin, with with flying. Twitch.tv slash SCG Live. Hop in the feature match area right now. Subscriber only chat. Some quality control. And it comes with these mode cons with more coming down the pipeline. All right. So getting back into our match. And we'll have that going all weekend. Remember, this is a three day coverage. So you'll, there'll be tomorrow, we'll have our day two coverage, rounds nine through 16. And then the full top eight, those are best of five matches in modern between the top players of the event. That'll be Sunday. Very excited. Again, this is the first time that we've had the Invitational Display Modern as a format. This is right before Grand Prix Charlotte, which will also be modern. So we're really happy to be able to have the spotlight on this format for a couple of weeks. Yeah, modern is, is just great, too. I'm a, just a, such a huge fan of it. Yeah, I've, I've unfortunately gotten to play very little of it. I think I've played in about, I want to say, three Grand Prix, four Grand Prix, and a little bit of the PTQ level play, uh, just because, you know, modern uptick in popularity has sort of coincided with me broadcasting a lot more than playing. But I do enjoy covering the matches very much. Yeah, I was... I, I don't get a chance to play it as much as I did. I said there was time before, you know, finally got a chance to find there was a modern IQ in my area. Managed to play that. Those things are great, by the way. If you haven't a chance to find one in your area, they were a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah. Some high, some high-level competition in tournaments without having to travel too far for it. I think it was half an hour. Huh, that's sweet. Good prizes, good competition. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. yeah. We get here for game three. So Zach, we said one game one, got pretty far ahead as Chris stumbled and this deck punishes stumbles so well. Game two was Zach stumbling. Me. So really the ideal opening hand for Zach here is two mountains two one drops and a wild slash. That's going to yep. be, the, that's, that's the winning recipe right there. So that can kill an Elvish Mystic or a Rattleclaw Mystic and a, a, a start that can apply some pressure. So is the card, is Sylvan Carry added just better than Rattleclaw in this matchup because it can't be wild slash? By leaps and bounds, it also blocks better. Uh, that's a huge swing in the matchup. If Chris has Rattleclaw Mystic as his turn two mana acceleration, uh, he's actually in trouble in games where he's on the draw. When it's Carry added, he's fine. Looks like See where the players are keeping here. 
so much of the decision in this matchup is on the mulligan. Yep. Oh, and you had to, both decks had to mulligan very aggressively. You saw in game one and in game two, the losing player die with a lot of cards left in their hand. Yeah. Temple is the start for Zach. No turn one creature, but looks like he has a fair amount of removal. Searing blood, still with the flames in his hand. No turn one mana creature for Chris either. He does, what Chris has kept looks like it's a hand based on two Nylea's Disciples. And for Zach, it may be more of game two. He scried to the bottom, played Boundary Street Denison, and did not hit his second land again. It looks like he's kept a hand with Wild Slash and Searing Blood, though, so he does have some answers to some mana creatures, but... But not Sylvan Carry added. Yeah, that's the, the big swing card in the matchup at this stage of the game. Draws Atarka's command, plays Zergo, Bell Striker. That'll be it. He'll swing him. Chris will take. He'll block. No tricks there as we go back over to Van Meter. Wow, and this... This is just looks like we might have a repeat of game two. It's Courser of Crufix for Chris. If he finds a land here, his devotion is getting to red is getting very or to green is getting very big. These Night Leaders disciples are gonna be huge. Yeah, this is another I, I almost feel like we are at the point of no return very early on again. Uh, even if Zach is able to follow up with removal spells for the Courser, and yeah. I, I don't believe he's drawn a land this turn. Still on one mana. Zergo will swing. He is willing to trade Zergo plus Wild Slash for Courser. And as a show of strength, Chris not even going to let him. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's one of those spots where Chris is in really good shape either way he plays it. Draws Nykthos. And this is going to be this is gonna be a massacre. Plays Nykthos, goes to 20. Nylea's Disciples at the ready. May not even need them yet. He might just make more green creatures. And I can understand the logic of Zach keeping this hand because he's got an opportunity to scry for another land. He's got Wild Slash with his answers, some mana acceleration. The problem is that if your hand is that slow, as you see Chris here with a, a Nylea's Disciple and a, a board Pop full of Nick Devotion. Shows, yep. Gaining six. If your hand's that slow, you're going to lose to Green Devotion just making its land drops and playing three and four mana spells. You have to get them in a position where you have some early aggression and then you're keeping their mana off balance. But if you just sit there and play draw go with them, trying to answer the mana creatures as it comes up, uh, you're not going to win that game. Yeah, the Wild Slash Chase here, Rattleclaw, to minimize the Devotion by one, but Chris going to gain seven at least next turn. And yeah, no more lands for Zach. Still on one land. We saw him play it out to the bitter end last time. I imagine he will do it again, but I don't see a way that he gets he, he gets this anymore. Yeah. yeah. Chris is just going to win with the beatdowns. A little bit of an anti-climax here, but for Chris Van Meter, it's going to be an 8-0 and o start to day one. That is his best start in an Invitational to date. Yeah. I looking mean, for his still, first big finish there. Still looking for his first top eight in the Invitationals. It is startling to think that Chris does not have a finish like that just yet, but... Uh, you know, nothing's guaranteed. Day two is still going to be a challenge, but uh, it looks like he's going to be undefeated at the end of this. Yeah, even just with the board, I'm not sure Zach can beat the board anymore. No. Green Red Devotion and Amulet Bloom. Those were his decks of choice here. Each with a 4-0 record. So many good paths for Chris this turn. Yeah, it's just hard to choose between them. I mean, he can Death Mist, Nykthos, then make Dis Nylea's Disciple. I think that I like Corsair plus Death Mist Raptor this turn, but it's all good. Well, if he was going to do that, he shouldn't have played the land already. Yeah, I, I think Chris probably has a different a different line <laughs> set up here. I, not that he... I don't think the game is demanding on him to make optimal decisions anymore. I still appreciate Chris going and, and trying to figure out what his line of play is. You know, yeah. you, know you never want to take anything for granted, but... So Nykthos is for five. That's going to be Death Mist Raptor, using three of it. Four more. That's going to be the Nylea's Disciple. That gains one, two, two, four, six, eight, nine. Chris up to 35. Yeah, this is good, too. I mean, <laughs> it's, sure. all, it's all good. Three threes and top deck. There you go. <laughs> and there you go. Chris Van Meter at eight and oh. Zach Witten, though. We'll see more of him, seven and one. Now, his go, when he goes back to modern, he, I believe he's playing Grixis Delver. Yeah, and uh, Grixis Twin, perhaps? Uh, some, ten, some, Grixis, some Grixis deck. Some yeah, Grixis I don't know if it's or Delver, you're right. Listen, seven and one, uh, a, a great run. I don't think this matchup is particularly good for a target of red. Uh, Zach's draws in the post-board games did him no help. And uh, Chris, pretty solid draw there, game three.